everybody, Peter Stewart here. Today we're going to be turning a lot of black walnut bowls. Uh, what's going on right now is my neighbor took down a black walnut tree about a month ago and uh, I got a chance to pick up a lot of the wood. Now I've already gotten started, I've roughed in five of these so far and uh, I did those five within a few days of the tree coming down. So the wood is awfully green right now, it's super heavy, uh, really easy to work with because of it though. And uh, what I've got now is uh, probably 10 or 15 more uh, rough log halves that I've chainsawed up. And I'm taking them to my bandsaw and I'm sawing them into rough bowl blank shapes that I can put on my lathe. So all we're doing right now is getting a lot of the meat out of the way and getting it closer to a round shape so it's a lot less turning to do on the machine. So once the blanks are cut into a round at the bandsaw, I'm using a Forstner bit on my drill to hog out some of the bark at the top so I've got something solid to put my spur drive into on the lathe. Once on the lathe, I'm using a bowl gouge to shape these into rough, thick-walled bowls like this one. That way we can put them on a shelf to dry and season up for a couple years and they're gonna warp, which is why we leave the walls a little hefty so that we've got enough wood there to turn them back into a round uh, once we finish them off. All we're doing today is taking these from logs, big sections of logs, like tree trunk size, and we're getting it into a bowl shape. So stick around and I will show you how I do it. Oh my God, it's heavy. That. All right, so some of these are so huge that I can't fit them onto my lathe and I'm not even gonna try to bandsaw them smaller. So instead I'm using my Old Faithful. All I'm going to do is split this lengthwise so that I'll have two blanks out of this one half. I've got a makeshift sort of a sawhorse set up with two other logs down here just to hold this in place. As long as you're not pushing and marring your way through the log, this is actually really solid. We are having some chainsaw difficulties right now. Chain stopped moving. I'm not sure why. I think either my chain is just a smidgen too tight or it got backed up with some of the chips. I kind of think it's the latter, to be honest with you. I think it got backed up. Oh, that looks like it was the problem. This is gonna be screaming ass hot right now. I don't, I don't want to touch that chain. No, you know my chain is a little tight. It could have been a little of both. That's pretty loose. That should be, that should be cranking just fine on there. I don't know what's going on. It's right there. It's right. It's not. Look, it's stuck on the bar. Whoop, I think I just got it. So, so on this thing, these should move, and this is really restricted, and I just found a single solitary wood chip jammed in these teeth. I'm gonna get it to spin just enough by hand, and then uh, we'll put the chain back on and let the, let the motor kind of power through that. Here, there's that. Now this has got to go here. It's always something with this saw. I don't know why. It's a good saw, but I always seem to have technical difficulties like that. All right, I think that's good. We'll give that a shot. Oh, 
Well, that worked. Alrighty. Okay, so now I've got this disc that I cut out of hardboard a number of years ago, and I've got a bunch of these, and they're all different sizes. So when I'm doing rough turn bowls, I take the disc and I put it on the wood, and I center it up where I like it. Got a scratch all. It's got a hole in the dead center. We tap that in. That way I can follow my blade on the saw along the edge of the disc, and it'll give me a perfect circle blank. Other than this one mishap here with the blade where I kind of went in too far, uh, that's actually pretty close to a circle and it's going to be really easy to put this on the lathe now because I won't have too much roughing in to do before it's round. What's really cool about doing the disc is I can flip the piece over, put the scratch all here on the other side, give it a couple taps with the mallet and now I've got perfect center on both sides of my blank. So when I'm doing a lot of rough bowls all at once, if I'm just going to take a day and that's all I'm going to do is rough in a bunch of uh, green wood, what I like to do is work in stations. So first I'll take the amount of blanks I'm going to do for the day. Right now I've probably got five or six cut up. I will get them on the bandsaw and rough them into a circle. I'll do all of them at once before going on to the next step. The next step here is going to be getting them into a rough round on the lathe and shaping the outside of the bowl as well as putting a tenon on the foot of the bowl so that I can do the inside. So I'm gonna take all the blanks that I've just cut, which again is like five or six, and I'm going to rough the outside and put a tenon on them. Because before moving on to the next step, which is the inside, I'll have to change the setup on my lathe and take out my centers and put my chuck on the headstock. So it's a lot easier and I could save a lot of uh, changing up on the lathe if I just do all the outsides at once and then move on and do all the insides later. So this is the blank that we cut up on the bandsaw just now, and uh, we need to make a decision about the grain on the bowl. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So on a bowl like this where I have a flat on both sides, I have a decision I can make because the grain, if you look, does this. So if I were to make this the top of the bowl, the grain pattern would look very different than if I were to make this the top of the bowl. Now if I had a bark line on the piece, like this blank right here, uh, I wouldn't have that same flexibility because uh, this would have to be the top of the bowl here and this would have to be the bottom unless I wanted to do a natural edge, whereas this would be the bottom and the bark line would be the natural rim of the bowl. But on this piece we have a lot of creative freedom, so what I think I'm going to do is make this the top of the bowl because that will be very different uh, from most of the pieces that I do which I leave the bark line on. The grain pattern will look different, it doesn't matter, this probably isn't making any sense. So we'll go ahead and put it on the lathe. So the first thing we do is put the spur drive on the blank. Give it a couple good taps with the mallet just to get it uh, initially bitten into the piece of wood. We're going to take this entire thing and put it into the headstock. Now we'll bring up our live center on the tailstock. And again, that disc that I used on the bandsaw is super cool because I have the center on both sides. So I don't have to work to try to find where that center's at. And uh, that's it. So now we're ready to turn. All right, here we go. Oh, too fast.
All right, so we got the whole thing in round. Uh, now what we need to do is make a tenon on the foot here. And all that is is like a little uh, thingy <laughs> that the jaws of the chuck can clamp onto so that we can flip it around and do the inside. Uh, so I'm just going to use the same bowl gouge to do that and uh, just kind of bring the curve around a little bit and make that tenon down there. So the bowl is shaped, the tent is made, and uh, now all we need to do is do that same thing to all the other pieces that I cut, and then we can move on to the next step. And this, folks, is why I don't do a ton of green wood turning anymore, because it makes an absolute mess. And you know who's got to clean all this up? This guy. There's a wood chip in my coffee. Why does this always happen to me? Okay, so I've got four of them rounded in on the outside, and I'm gonna stop here for the day, and uh, what I'm gonna do just to prevent them from cracking or checking overnight is put on some of this stuff. This is anchor seal, it's just like a paintable wax. You brush it on the end grains and it'll keep it from checking. Um, and it really does work, so I'm just gonna put a little bit on and uh, let these sit overnight, and we'll get back at it tomorrow.